Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 21st of March. Budget session in limbo, opposition protest on first floor of India's parliament. Mounting inflation woes weigh on Pakistan's ahead of Ramadan. And Sri Lanka no longer bankrupt nation, says President after IMF bailout approval. And now for all the details, with the budget session of the Indian Parliament in limbo, opposition parties on Tuesday carried out a unique protest on the Parliament's first floor to press the demand for a parliamentary probe into the Adani Rao, which has disrupted proceedings in both the houses. The opposition has blamed the government of favouring the Adani group amid allegations of stock manipulation. The Parliament has not functioned for a single day since it met for the second leg of the budget session on March 13th over the issue. Meanwhile, the ruling BJP lawmakers have also been seeking an apology from Congress leader Rahul Gandhi for his remarks on Indian democracy in London. On Tuesday too, both houses were adjourned after a few minutes of sloganeering. As the Islamic holy month of Ramadan approaches, people in cities across Pakistan are feeling the pinch of rising prices amid decades-high inflation and a crippling economic slowdown. A report. As Ramadan approaches, people in Pakistani cities typically throng wholesale markets, making bulk purchases of food and provisions for the holy month of fasting. However, ahead of the festivity, residents are feeling the pinch of rising prices amid decades-high inflation and a crippling economic slowdown. They complain the items which were easily available at 200 rupees till last year are now priced at twice the amount. <laughs> Recent measures to secure an IMF loan, including reversal of subsidies and a hike in energy and fuel prices, have fueled 50-year record high inflation, which hit 31.5% year-on-year in February. The $1.1 billion bailout is critical for the country to avoid defaulting on external debt obligations. <laughs> गरीब तो देख ही सकता और जो मिडिल क्लास है वो मिडिल क्लास भी सोचने में मजबूर हो गए हैं कि क्या चीज लें क्या चीज न लें Ramadan which involves both fasting and feasting is expected to begin in Pakistan on Thursday but residents worry of tough days ahead amid one of country's worst economic crises Moving on, Jamil Maksud, a Kashmiri political activist, has criticized Pakistan for violating its own constitution by conducting a digital census in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and Gilgit-Baltistan, a move which is being opposed by people in the region. Speaking on sidelines of UNHRC session in Geneva, Maksud said locals fear the census will diminish their identity and aims to change the demography. He said they are worried they will subsequently lose even the few rights they have. That's why people uh, think that uh, that will change their demography and then uh, in, in the, after the changing of that demography they will lose everything. They will lose uh, in, in incumbent political representation, they will lose their incumbent jobs and uh, many other things. So they are opposing. Maksud further accused China of violating international laws over reports that Beijing plans to open diplomatic offices in Gilgit, Baltistan, which is the gateway to its China Pakistan economic corridor. He urged the international community to take serious cognizance over China's expansionist agenda. And Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe said on Tuesday that the island nation is no longer a bankrupt nation as the International Monetary Fund has approved a nearly 3 billion US dollars bailout for the country. Sri Lanka will receive the first tranche of about 330 million dollars in the next two days. Vikramasinghe said that the country's foreign exchange situation will be improved and he will gradually roll back import restrictions. Future disbursements would be tied to review every six months. The program will enable access of up to $7 billion in overall funding.
Economic mismanagement coupled with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic left Sri Lanka severely short of dollars for essential imports at the start of last year, tipping the country into its worst financial crisis. The island nation aims to announce a debt restructuring strategy in April. WFP, the World Food Programme, has said that a drop in donor funding could push parts of Afghanistan into famine this year, adding that up to 9 million Afghans could be left without food aid after it had already had to slash rations. The comments by the director of WFP in Afghanistan are one of the first concrete signs after international officials warned that growing global emergencies and challenging economic conditions, combined with Taliban restrictions on women, could lead donors to pull back. The WFP official also described the Taliban ban on female NGO workers as a devastating blow. The WFP received around $1.7 billion last year for Afghanistan from dozens of institutions and governments, including the US, Britain and Germany. The UN records did not indicate which donors had reduced funding this year. Well, Nepal's Prime Minister Pushp Kamal Dehel on Monday secured the vote of confidence in Parliament for the second time after he assumed the top office. Dehel, who was leading a minority government after his former ally CPN, UML and RPP withdrew support from his government, secured 172 votes in his favour, while 89 voted against him. He is now expected to forge a new alliance with Nepali Congress and other smaller groups who will also join his cabinet by next week. However, analysts say the hell could face challenges in distributing ministerial positions and satisfy the ambitious allies. A natural buffer between India and China, Nepal has seen 11 governments since 2008 when its 239-year-old monarchy was abolished. This instability has undermined business and investment in the Himalayan nation. And sparrow sightings have significantly diminished over the last few years in India due to noise and air pollution. But several conservationists have taken it upon themselves to preserve the beloved birds by making wooden houses for them in their own homes. Take a look. Every year on 20th March, the World Sparrow Day is celebrated to increase awareness of the house sparrow. Several conservationists in India have taken it upon themselves to preserve the beloved birds by making wooden houses for them in their own homes. Conservationist Gaurav Bajpai from Kanpur, who makes and distributes these houses, claims the sparrow population has increased by 70 to 80,000 in the last 7-8 years through his campaign, which also encourages tree plantation. House sparrow is a very social bird. It roosts communally and its nest is usually placed together in clumps. Yeah, के जो अंडे और बच्चे हैं वो सबसे ज़्यादा गिरकर मर रहे हैं। तो इनकी एक आबादी ऐसी है जो जीवन के प्रथम 15 से 20 25 दिन में ही समाप्त हो रही थी और जिसका प्रतिशत बहुत ज़्यादा था। हमारे अनुमान के हिसाब से 60 प्रतिशत से ज़्यादा ये था कि इनकी आबादी गिरके मर रही है। तो फिर हमने इनको सुरक्षित घर देना शुरू किय Many reasons have been attributed by experts for decline in bird population, including noise and air pollution, raging constructions and deforestation. The introduction of unleaded petrol, the burning of which produces harmful fumes, is also considered toxic for the birds. Well, that's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.